traders, how are you? Marcello, founder of the Day Trading Academy, co-founder of Speed Up Trader, where you guys can come and apply to trade our money live for just an application process of 120 bucks. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the best traders in the world. So this is a list of the five traders that I have put together. Uh, I think that obviously the best traders are defined by their results and results in this instance are money made. So I, I wanted to put together a list. There's gonna be some, obviously some very common names, let's say, that you guys already know. There might be some that you haven't known. And I'm also gonna try to put some lessons in between because I think that some of the quotes that you guys are gonna see also in this video are gonna be, kinda make you think a little bit, right? You guys are watching this video because you wanna learn, so I wanna make sure that I provide you guys value. If you have any other traders that I didn't mention on the list that you think should be included, go ahead and, and put it here in the comments. Don't forget to leave all your questions with hashtag AskMarcello. I'll be happy to go ahead and pull your questions for you. I love to share my experience in this industry. It's been almost, I think, 18 years now I'm going on 18 years and I love to be able to share the experience I've had we've had a, an amazing amount of success in day trading Academy and I really have to thank you for it so thank you uh, the first person on the list uh, I didn't include Warren Buffett because he's not a trader so I'll explain to you guys that here in just a moment first person on the list is a trader called Jesse Livermore he's an American trader Obviously, a lot of these traders are American. Uh, they, the first one, Jesse Livermore, is, was born in 1877 to 1940. He's American, and he was known for both his colossal gains and his colossal losses as well. He was able to, I researched this quite a bit online, and there's some, inf there's some kind of contradictory information, but he built his, uh, he either built his fortune shorting the 1929 market crash, or he made his fortune literally selling at the peak right before it. So essentially he predicted the market crash one way or another. Uh, it was his fortune amounted to about $100 million. Now, $100 million, let's say 1930, 1940, uh, remember that there's inflation. So if you guys don't know what inflation is, it's essentially the devaluation of the currency. You know, a $1 soda doesn't cost a dollar the next year because the dollar is weaker. So it, it's a dollar five next year, a dollar ten, and over time the dollar, you know, dollar has lost 97% of its value over the last 100 years, if I'm not mistaken. So Jesse Livermore, in, in his hundred million in 1930 or 1940 dollars would equate to about 1.5 trillion dollars today in 2019. So that's you guys can see why I put him number one, right? Now, he tragically took his own life in 1940. I, I think one of the biggest lessons that we can learn from Jesse Livermore is, is those colossal gains and losses. You know, I think, I think that most people consider trading to be like any other thing that you learn, where, where you ride a bike, you fall down, you get up, you try again, you get up, you fight trade, right? And then eventually you learn it, and then you know it forever, and then you're fine. Or a doctor, you know, you go to school for 18 million years, you spend a billion dollars on your college education that you're gonna pay forever, and then you, you learn your doctor and then you keep learning and stuff like that. Day trading is really more about uh, a professional athlete, right? We can compare it to, let's say, LeBron James in basketball or Tom Brady in football or Lionel Messi in soccer, Ronaldo in soccer, where you have to keep performing at a high level. And because some people, you know, a lot of times reason why people don't achieve success in this industry is because they, one, aren't level, they, they aren't able to get to that high level of, of profitability or that high level of the word, I'm, 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 I got it in, right in the tip of my head, level of, of not endurance, oh, I forgot the word, but anyway, a lot of people aren't able to get to that level of, of and I try to say it again, you see that? You know, we have elite stars like LeBron James and Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan that can handle the, the, that pressure and, and sustain that level of success 
in high altitude or high level for a period of time and most of us we're lazy we simply just don't want to do that and that's part of the reason why in my opinion most people lose money and with with Jesse Livermore you know one of the things that to point out is just because you guys learn how to trade and you're consistent doesn't mean you're going to be pumped for tomorrow the market can change your system needs to change you have to always be able to adapt it's like Michael Jordan or LeBron James or Tom Brady they have to they have to perform in that game every single time they have to perform in every single game that they play if they stop performing they they're nobody's gonna pay them same thing with a trader except with a trader you start losing money right george soros <laughs> so i think is one of the most popular people in our lifetime he's in a hungarian born uh, trader in the 1930s he's currently chairman for Soros Fund Management. It's one of the most successful firms in history from the hedge fund industry. In September 1992, he's famous. His nickname is he's the, the trader that broke the Bank of England. He made a trade for $10 billion in 1992 against the British pound, and he made a $1 billion profit. He's worth billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. And um, he obviously one of the greatest traders of all time. I have another trader on the list, his name is Jim Rogers. He was a trader that started with Jim Soros, what's called the Quantum Fund. The Quantum Fund was a fund that achieved 4,200% returns over 10 years, while the S&P 500 only got 47%, so imagine that, 420% a year. Now, they obviously split, you know, a lot of people can debate whether they did or they didn't. I personally love Jim Rogers because of his mentality in life. I think most people think that money is important and at the end of the day, if you guys are in this business just to make money, you're gonna lose it. So remember that this, this business isn't about, this isn't a business about making money, it's a business about being consistent or making right decisions. I think it's obvious that you guys can make a lot of money in this business, would you? I mean, that's why everybody wants to do it, right? So instead of focusing on the money, which brings an emotional component, right? You're gonna have fear and you're gonna have um, all kinds of manifestations of, of emotions, uh, pre-beliefs about money and, and all your ego, all of these things. Whereas if you don't think about money and you worry just about making the right decision, if you make the right decision, obviously the money will come, right? So that's an important thing. And I, 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 I wanted to do a video about my favorite trader of all time, which is actually Jim Rogers. There's reasons for that. So if you guys want me to do a video on Jim Rogers, let me know and I'll, uh, I'll make sure to do that. One of the things I wanted to point out, because I've, I've, you know, you guys probably have been following me for a while, I've been traveling around the world now for almost 10 years. I've had the academy now for I think eight or nine years, if I'm not mistaken. And for me, money isn't the most important thing in the world because you can make it and lose it, right? But time is not something you can get back. And, and you know, George Soros is worth now, he was worth more, I think, in the past 8.2 billion. Jim Rogers is worth 300 million. But at the end of the day, can't you buy everything that you want for if you're worth 300 million compared to a billion? See what I mean? Like, we always gotta enjoy life a little bit. The third person on my list is Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio is the founder of the largest hedge fund in the United States. As of today, when I pulled up the assets under management, he has $147 billion in under management. Uh, he's a very, very intelligent man, more than anything. The reason why his hedge fund is so successful, I believe it's because of his outlook on success. One of the things that he says is young traders lose money because they have an ego sensitivity. And that's really true, right? Most of us, Men, I think at the end of the day, right, we want to be macho. We want to be, you know, like don't ask for directions, right? And I think that uh, it says everything that he says that because at the end of the day, you're either going to be humble in the market or you're going to get humbled by the market, which is, which is, um, which is very simple. The next one on my list is a trader called Paul Tudor Jones. He's a trader that called the market crash of 1986. He made a hundred million dollars during that market crash. You guys can see kind of 
the, the, the most of the money that these guys have made were doing turbulent times, right? This is one of the reasons why I think that day trading is one of the best jobs in the world because when things are bad, it gives you the opportunity to make even more money. Not guarantee, right? Because we, like you said, we have to produce the results. So just because you buy a course doesn't, doesn't guarantee you success. But it's really something where you can travel around the world, you can not have any employees, you don't have to deal with a boss, no rush hour traffic, and even when things are bad, because it's cyclical, right? We have good times and bad times, trading gives you the opportunity to be able to make more money, the opportunity to make more money in those situations. Stanley Druckenmiller. is the fifth person on my list. He was hired by George Soros to run the Quantum Fund in 1988. He also made a billion dollar trade shorting the pound sterling, the, the currency from the UK in 1992. One of the things that he always says is true traders always focus on the overall risk to reward ratio. I think that's super, super important because a lot of people, because of fear, what they do is they try to kind of go, go, go like scalp where they just get in and out, in and out, in and out to just try to make little small gains. But over the long run, we have to understand that traders are going to lose. Losing is part of this game, right? Just because you lose money doesn't make it a bad decision, but you can make money and have a bad decision as well. That's why the traders, for example, in DTA, I always make sure that they focus on good decisions, not on whether the result are positive or negative, because just because you have a positive outcome, a winning trade, doesn't mean you made a good decision. And just because you have a negative outcome, which is a losing trade, doesn't mean you made a bad decision either. See what I mean? So those are, those are the five guys on my list, just to kind of rehash them for you. We got Jesse Livermore, George Soros, Jim Rogers, which is all on the list, but he's a special mention. Uh, Ray Dalio, Paul Tudor Jones, Stanley Druckenmiller. If you guys have any more, leave them here on the bottom. I don't have Warren Buffett on my list because I don't consider him a trader. He's more of an investor, a value investor. It's pretty funny. I saw a video the other day where he said that people don't trade like I do because it's so simple and they, nobody wants to get rich slow. And he essentially, what he does is he buys companies, obviously. He invests in a lot of uh, devalued assets other than the Apple that he just lost $4 billion on where he bought in the peak of the market. I told you so, Warren. I told you so. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so he, he mo he's more of an investor where he buys stocks to get dividend payments. He buys companies, for example, Geico Insurance, you know, all the amazing commercials. He owns that insurance company. So imagine 100 million people paying $100 a month for car insurance. People don't have accidents every year, right? Most people have accidents maybe one every five years, one every 10 years. So there's a pool of money. He gets that money and then continues to invest it over time. So that's why I didn't have Warren Buffett on the list. I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, those are, for me, some of the, the, the best traders of all time. If you guys have any other questions, don't forget to let me know. Hashtag Ask Marcello. Don't forget to subscribe here to the channel. And as always, if you guys have any other guys that, you know, that, that I didn't mention on the list, I know I'm probably missing a few, but I didn't want to make the video too long. Don't forget to leave it down in the comments. All right, we'll see you next time.